2016 was a year that gave winks to herdsmen and farmers' clashes in most parts of the country. There are still security concerns as the huge IDP figure, which stands at about 160,000 ads at April 2016, stares us in the face. How much of efforts have we put into addressing these frequent clashes, especially in the middle belt? Let's take a ride together on Eyewitness Report. 12 out of the 23 local government councils in Benue State witnessed intense herdsman attacks in 2016, with hundreds of lives lost, property and farm produce worth millions of naira destroyed. According to the Displacement Tracking Matrix report released in April 2016 from the International Office on Migration, Benue State alone recorded over 106,074 IDPs from insurgency-related attacks. The report indicates that by the end of August 2016, the total figure dropped to 30,584 as most of the IDPs relocated to live with family members in order to earn a living. In 2014, the United Nations High Commission for Refugee began the Goma Shelter Home Project for displaced victims of herdsmen attacks and by November 2016, the UNHCR handed over 100 homes to widows and indigent IDP families. <laughs> Worried by this development, prominent sons of the Thief ethnic group gather at the Kiesha Shoa Festival in Daudu to promote a campaign on consumption of chicken as a source of protein as against beef, which is the major reason for the conflicts. The women dancing are widows and displaced persons from their various villages. And Reverend Father Solomon Umfa is also an IDP and he sheds light on their plight. Yeah, as I say, the mothers that are singing behind me, some are displaced. They can't go back home. They can't go back home because of the Fulani attacks. And what annoys us is the, 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 the loud silence of the powers that are. The president is silent about our plight. But he goes everywhere commissioning a, 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 a team, tax force on cattle rustling. So when cattle are rustled, the president goes there and uh, forms a tax force. When we are kids, then he is silent. Then that, that, that speaks. And that is why I'm calling my brothers and sisters, unless something we take our destiny into our hands, nobody is going to do that for us. Elder statesman and the Second Republic Minister for Mines and Steel, Mr. Paul Nongo, who graced the occasion, says he continues to fellowship with the younger generation to give them hope of a better Nigeria. Governor Samuel Autumn, who is represented by his chief press secretary, urges the people to be good ambassadors of the state with a promise to stand by the Keisha Shua Cultural Festival. This event signifies the unity and it is a clarion call to all team people and friends of the team who are gathered here that that unity which has eluded team land for so long is coming back and that every son and daughter of team land who is gathered here should remember that it is very important that we do only the things that promote our state, Benue, and the things that promote our unity. The governor asked me to say that this event should continue. It should become an annual event that every year the government of Benue, under his leadership, will send support to this gathering. After a review of the plight of the IDPs, participants agree that the state lawmakers must first create the legal instrument for the people to seek protection against herdsmen attacks going forward. Prominent among those calling for indigenous vigilante force is a youth activist who also accuses the Benue State House of Assembly of insensitivity to the proposed open grazing prohibition bill. We look forward to ensuring that we form a, a strong cohesive force that will push the voice deeper to the appropriate authorities to demand for the safety of our people and their farmlands. Before this kind of occasion really finds momentum, we need our legislators to give us that law that prohibits open grazing and, and, and regulates ranching. 
and encourages the Benue community to ranch their cattle. Not just Fulani, anybody coming to, shouldn't just roam about and, and raise, raise cattle. Once that is done, that's the only excuse that you have these people roaming in the bushes and they can attack people. Take care of that and a lot is taken care of. In March 2016, some of the victims under the umbrella of the movement against Fulani occupation presented a proposed open grazing prohibition bill to the Benue State House of Assembly. But 10 months after, the fate of the bill still hangs in the balance. To this end, hundreds of IDPs, made up of children and old women, staged a peaceful march to occupy the State Assembly, following the inability of the state lawmakers to pass the bill presented before it in March 2016. Upon arrival at the Assembly gate, two lawmakers engaged some of the campaigners in a brawl as they shoved themselves over the refusal to allow the protesters access into the Assembly complex. Finally, the speaker leads the way as he admits the campaigners into the complex. The convener of the group and its legal advisor demand the passage of the bill and also shares on how Uruguay, with 12 million cattles, handle them. What we want in federal states clearly is that if anybody is keeping livestock, he should take the responsibility of creating a secure place for those livestock. Let's not have any reason and excuse why anybody should go around our backyards in the name of raising cattle. The people in Uruguay were bush headers just like our Fulani brothers. We don't hurt them. We are saying do the proper thing. When the law was introduced, they left their cows in the bush and horses and bought land and established ranches. And they have peace. Uruguay produces the highest beef in the world. They are not fighting and killing people. Yes. So a law is very central to this fight. Yes. And that is why this bill must be passed. The speaker, who laments the rate of herdsmen killings in the state, pleads for more time to enable lawmakers convene a public hearing on the bill. I want to assure you that our desire is that as soon as we are done with the appropriation law, which will take us a very few weeks from now, we are, the first thing we are going to commence on is the public hearing of this particular bill. With these multifaceted campaigns to halt the brazen herdsmen attacks on rural communities across Benue State, there is renewed hope that this menace could be brought to an end. We have a number of photos you sent to our portal and we'll be going through some of them shortly. But before then, this is to let you know that you can contribute your quota to solving some of the challenges by making use of the Channels TV Eyewitness Portal. Begin by downloading the app on any of your device. Swipe to reveal the Eyewitness menu. Then follow instructions on how to get your videos and photos uploaded. Now let's have a look at some of those you already sent. Our first photo comes from Zamfara State and it shows core members protesting alleged non-payment of their allowance for December 2016. They're calling on the concerned authority to please come to their rescue. And our eyewitness thinks this shouldn't be mentioned among us. Our next photo shows an abandoned PSP truck along Fakombi Street, Okonla, Egbeda. Our eyewitness says the truck had barely started operations when this happened. You want Loma? to intervene quickly. From Jebba Road, Niger State comes this photo of a terrible traffic jam along Jebba Road, Niger State. Our eyewitness says this has become a regular feature along this route, setting motorists back every time they ply this route. You wonder why the road is not getting due attention. Lastly is this photo of a waterlogged Ujogiwa Street, Lagos Island. Our eyewitness Hassan Debola is worried that just a few drops of rain is already casting threat of possible flooding on the island. It's time we called it a day on Eyewitness Report for the week. we we'll very much love to hear from you. Send those photos and videos to our Eyewitness Portal. Until next week, when we should be here again, I'm Chris Elams. Bye-bye.